Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief. Today's top stories in four minutes. It's Tuesday, October 16th at about 6.30 p.m. Secretary of State Pompeo's visit to Saudi Arabia was all smiles in public, a stark contrast to growing anger in Washington over what happened to Yamal Khashoggi, the U.S. resident who was killed inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, and the way the Saudis have behaved in its aftermath. As I've argued before, the White House is walking a tightrope between maintaining good relations with an important ally and not losing moral authority by allowing such a blatant murder of a journalist and violation of international law to go unpunished. The punishment side of the equation is nowhere to be found. Pompeo met with King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, saying the U.S. and Saudi Arabia are, quote, strong and old allies who will face our challenges together. He also welcomed the king's, quote, commitment to supporting a thorough, transparent, and timely investigation. Huh? Hashogi was murdered two weeks ago. Nothing has been timely or transparent. The Saudis may want to listen to what's happening beyond the White House. Senator Lindsey Graham, an important defender of U.S. weapons sales to Saudi Arabia, has vowed never to work with the kingdom so long as the crown prince is in charge. Also today... President Trump unleashed a Twitter tirade, the low light of which was an attack on porn star Stormy Daniels. Trump won a crushing, unusually big victory in federal court when a judge awarded him attorney's fees in a lawsuit filed against him by Daniels and her lawyer, Michael Avenatti. But being a good winner is beyond Trump, who gloated, insulting Daniels by calling her horse face and attacking Avenatti as a third-rate lawyer. They shot back, most notably Daniels, who referred to Trump's shortcomings and, quote, perhaps a penchant for bestiality, and called him tiny. Honestly, my son was more mature than these people when he was in third grade. Trump also threatened to withhold aid from Honduras if it does not stop a caravan of some 2,000 migrants from reaching the U.S. He seems to ignore that Honduras can't do much to stop its people if they're already in a different country. And if Trump expects a struggling state like Honduras to stop migrants from leaving in the future, he is ignoring reality and history. This caravan exposes hypocrisy on both sides. Republicans have historically criticized communist countries for being state prisons that don't allow their citizens to leave. So now Trump wants Honduras to have its own version of an iron curtain? But Democrats, who harshly attack Trump for taking this hard line on immigration, resist his every effort to strengthen American borders. No country should restrict its citizens from emigrating, but sovereign states should have the right to decide whom they allow in and to have strong border security if that is what its citizens want. I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. A day after South Korea's Moon Jae-in sang the praises of North Korea's intentions to denuclearize and lobbied for the relaxation of Western sanctions against the Hermit Kingdom, North Korean state media slammed the U.S. for its, quote, evil attempt to maintain the sanctions, and we learned Kim Jong-un had refused to hand over an inventory of his nuclear facilities until a former declaration ending the Korean War when he met with Pompeo in Pyongyang. The road to normalcy with the Kim regime will be extremely bumpy and may not reach its hoped-for destination. U.S. equity markets posted their best day since March, thanks to strong earnings from some of the country's biggest companies. They ran the gamut from financials to healthcare, consumer products, and following the closing bell, Netflix. The major stock indexes were all up more than 2%. The Nasdaq was up almost 3%. In our alternate universe segment, The Great Divide Between Conservative and, media, and Liberal Media, I will vent again about the ongoing decline in journalistic standards, especially on cable news networks on both left and right. How much longer must we wait for them to acknowledge that most of what they do is opinion and not journalism? If I have to listen to one more so-called news anchor editorialize, my family will wonder if I've gone off the deep end as I scream in my office. Anchors should not be in the business of telling politicians they're right about anything, as I heard more than once today. Ask probing questions and educate viewers to make their own decisions. You can find all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. Please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and follow me on Twitter at Amora TV. I will see you again tomorrow.